Hi, my name is Katie Reichel and I'm a graduate student at the University of Michigan studying aerospace engineering. Today, I'm going to talk about using metastructures to reduce vibrations. Have you ever been on an airplane going through turbulence? Or been on a bus riding down a bumpy road going up and down and up and down? These are both examples of vibrations. Vibrations are in part of an object moves back and forth continuously, such as the wings on an airplane or the seats on a bus. Typically, we want to reduce this back and forth motion, meaning we want to get rid of those vibrations. And we want to do this for two reasons. Firstly, we want to do this because of comfort. Basically, you want your ride to be smooth. Secondly, vibrations can cause objects to break. Objects can break when part of the object is moved back and forth over and over again. For example, let's look at this paper clip. If we bend, the paper clip once, it won't break. But if we bend the paper clip over and over again, eventually it does break. A similar thing can happen with an airplane or a building, but it will take years before those break. The smaller the motion, the longer it takes for the object to break. Therefore, we want less vibrations. Tall buildings also experience vibration. Strong winds can cause the building to sway back and forth, or earthquake tremors can do the same thing. A common way to reduce vibrations in tall buildings is to use a device called a vibration absorber. One type of vibration absorber is a pendulum, a long rope with a heavy ball attached to the bottom. When attached to an object, the ball oscillates back and forth and absorbs the motion of the object it is attached to hence the name vibration absorber. When you attach a vibration absorber to a building, the motion due to wind and earthquakes is greatly reduced. Let's see how this works. Here, we have a model of a building. The one on the left has no vibration absorber, and the one on the right has a vibration absorber shown in the orange circle. Now, we will start shaking these buildings with the same amount of movement at the bottom. This is simulating an earthquake hitting the building. You will notice that the building on the right, the one with the vibration absorber, is shaking much less than the one on the left. So now, let's look at how this is implemented in a real building. In 2009, this building in Taiwan was the tallest building in the world with 101 floors. Taiwan experiences strong wind and earthquake tremors, so let's see how this building withstands these vibrations. If we zoom into the top of the building and look at a cutout, you will see an extremely large vibration absorber. There is a large ball that weighs 660 tons. That's as heavy as 300 cars. The ball is attached to four long ropes and the total height of this vibration absorber is five stories. So, we want to use this technology on airplanes. Instead of using a pendulum type vibration absorber, we would use a vibration absorber that looks like a diving board. But adding a vibration absorber can add significant weight as we saw in the last example. And the heavier an airplane, the more expensive it is to fly. And we don't want flying to be any more expensive. Instead of adding one large vibration absorber, my research looks at adding lots of small vibration absorbers. Instead of having one large vibration absorber in the center of the airplane, we could add many small vibrations absorbers throughout the wing. This is what we call a metastructure. Let's say we have these two cases. They weigh exactly the same, meaning the plane on the left is the same weight as the one on the right. The cool thing is that the one with many small vibration absorbers, the one on the right, is better at getting rid of vibrations. Therefore, we can use metastructures to reduce vibrations in airplanes and many other objects without adding a bunch of extra weight. Thanks for watching.